So the Acid Browser in 740 2024 is a significant improvement over the old content browser. It still obviously supports materials and objects and stuff, but it also supports presets and color swatches and basically everything that Cinema 4D has. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to load that stuff up and how to use it in a, how to make it cloud-based synced between all your other computers. So let's get into it. Need rigs. Ace Fight Studios has rigs. Okay, so let's start with the presets. Uh, what is a preset? How to use it now? So we have this little button here on the left called Asset Browser. And basically a preset is anything in Cinema now. So let's say we make a text object and we set its font to whatever it is. Um, I'm gonna set my favorite one, which is Cochromat. By the way, new version, you can actually just type and it'll filter it out. You just can't see it on my screen because it's all the way at the top. But you type and it filters out all your text, so super handy. So let's label this Ace5, and I want it to be in the middle, and I want there to be some beveling on the caps. And if we switch to wireframe mode, I want this to be, I don't know, regular grid. Yeah, it looks good enough for me. Or dominant. And so this is how I want every text object to start off because I feel like I've changed all the time. Now you can set presets, but for some reason presets on a text object don't always save everything. So for the text object specifically, I just grab it and I just drag it in here. And by default, we're going to category called uncategorized, uncategorized. It's called text ace five. And go okay, I'll create this little model here and I'll even do a preview. Um, if you click this little detail button on the top here, uh, you can actually set your custom preview and I'll show you quickly how to do that. Uh, well, actually you can just load up any icon you want in there, or any picture to render yourself. Uh, just make sure the background matches to this one and it'll look nice because then you can grab this and you can just drag it into your interface and it'll be there when you need it. So if you delete this and you have other things in your scene, you just like boom, and it just pops up very handy. You can also do this with more complex stuff. Like I personally do it with the cloners and stuff. Um, or if you have like open VDB thing, like I just constantly basically do the builder and then I put it in a mesher. So this can be like a separate asset. You press okay. And then you just drag it up here. And then anytime you have something, you just make it, I wonder if the alt button works. No. Yeah, and then you just create it, then you can just drive your stuff in there. So you can um, speed stuff up also. For example, you can get a cloner and a cube in there, make it smaller. Let's get a sphere. Set this guy to surface mode, object mode. Put it on the sphere. Set this to polygon centers. I seem tend to do this a lot. Make this cube a bit smaller. Here, but if you I'll G this, you go cloner surface and just drag it in there. And it's simple as that. Click here and you can load up any picture you want. Clipboard, or you can load it from a file, or you can generate preview. However, you like. For example, my render time calculator, this one. And also, you just drag it in here, press OK, and then you can drag it into your interface. And then whenever you need it, regardless of what's going on in your file, you can just go boop, and you have a render time calculator. Super handy. Um, furthermore, this works with presets. Um, if I, for example, make a sphere here and make it editable and go into point mode, um, I usually stick a, because I don't want to do some pose morph, so rigging, pose morph. And basically, 9% of the time when I make a pose morph tag, I want it to be in point mode. That's just what I need. So here, I can go save preset and call it pose morph points. And as you saw it also when I did that, it was here as default. So now whenever I create a pose morph tag, it'll be in point mode. And if I want to something else, I can either just go back to the default one or I can create a new one and save that. And also now that I have this here, little pose morph tag, and it goes into your presets folder which isn't super convenient. I prefer to put that into my own folder, but I'll go over that in a bit. And then you can again, drag this out here. And then when you need it, you just go boom, and you have your point morph uh, spear thing. 
So there, you know, add some poses, but it's there, it makes life a lot easier. And because materials, for example, some things just don't really work all the time. Like if I make a new material or create, uh, you know, if I make create a material, a uh, new standard material, standard Cinema 4D, and I go reflectance here, and I remove this, and I go add GGX, and I go ray. Not that anyone uses standard material, but sometimes I use it for previews and stuff. And I do this, and I want this to be maximum, and then I go save preset, uh, mat. GGX. For some reason, it uh, it doesn't work. So you just mess up the reflectance. So in that case, uh, I just make the material and I just plug it into my presets and then I make an icon for the interface and when I need it, I just click it and boom, I have the material I need. Material, move, add GGX and Dielectric. So this guy, and I can wait. I can drag him in into my uncategorized folder, and then from here I can drag him out into here. I go. So when I need it, I just go boom, and I have my material. And when I'm not there, it's not there, and it's exactly the one I want with all my presets ready to go. Obviously, it can be octane or whatever mats you want, but you can just drag them right into there. And if you want to get rid of it, just go Customize Palettes and double click on it. Now, so the problem right now is that we're using the preference database. Like if you notice when we save something, uh, like when we, or is it some kind of preset? Give me a preset. Owner here, when we save this preset, you will see it goes into the category, into the preference uh, database, or you can put it into the scene. But I usually like to have a new database because I work with different versions of cinema on different computers, and I like all that to be synced up. So I have a separate database, which you can just create a new database and it'll tell you to pick a folder. Um, when you do that though, um, I'd put it somewhere in a Dropbox or a cloud storage, see so yeah, I have it in my Dropbox. And after that, I'll show you, I'll connect my current one, which I'm experimenting with. So I connect database and I pick, there you go. I got my asset browser, ACE5 database, and I go select folder. And now I got this folder called ACE5. And I also already got this text file with a nice little icon. And now when I save presets, I save them to not to my ACE5 database. So this syncs on into the cloud and I have it on all my other computers and my all my other Cinema 4D installs. Now by default, each Cinema 4D install, you have to connect the database. You have to connect the database for each one. But Windows has this super handy thing called environment variables. Um, we have it here. On the Maxim help page, you can see you can have a C4D script folder. That's really handy. So you have the script folder, which every version of Cinema 4D just looks for this on your computer. And connect databases. And you can just add these. Just go to start and type in environment variables. And the system properties window will come up. And you'll press environment variables. And this will come up. And then you can add your variables in the top part of this window. So just G connect database. And then paste in the folder path. And then every version of Cinema 4D on your computer will connect to our database, super handy. And after that, the next thing you would do is here, I have this folder called defaults. And right now I just have two things, but this is the bend, because usually when I make a bend deformer, I want it to be bent straight away so I can see which way it's pointing. And these are the defaults. And as you can see, if I, there's this, like when you make a default, it has a little crown on it, but see so you no know crown, but if I just go click, click, now they're defaults. So now whenever I make a new bend deformer from my, Bent thing, it's already bent. And if I have a, um, where is it? My sphere. Um, and I want to put a pose morph tag on it. Right click and rigging. In case I'm not using that shortcut there, it's already in point mode because the defaults are set. And you can set defaults for all your objects. So super handy. And this uncategorized stuff right now, it's, uh, by, the, by the way, so you have an ACE5 folder in here, but not everything in this folder is going to be in my database. The categories, like these folders, and the databases are separate. You can have, for example, I can get my uncategorized stuff, so my cloner and my volume mesher, and I can move it into my ACE5 folder, and it's here now. But these guys are still in the preference database, so you can see here, this stuff is an ACE5 database. So they won't actually sync up just because they're in this folder. 
So that's kind of something you got to keep an eye on base. So you just go right click and you can go move to database and you can pick ACE5 and then it'll be no ACE5 database and it'll sync through all my other versions of cinema and my computers. So that's global variables, default folder, and yeah, object of buttons. And a default thing is very handy stuff. Strongly recommend you implement this in your workflow. Super handy. Oh yeah, and the last super handy thing that we have here is watch folders. So in the databases here, you can connect a watch folder, which basically selects a folder from your computer. For example, I have an HDRI folder here, and I'm going to select that folder, and then boom, I have it here under watch folders. And these are all the HDRIs that are in that folder. If you can't see the previews, sometimes not straight away, just right click on them, select them, and go right click and go generate preview. And it'll generate previews of files that it can generate previews of. And also there's a couple of Cinema 4D files, which as you can see, C40 files that are also in that folder. So they load it up, the HDRI is loaded up, and they're all just in this watch folder. So if you have some asset folder that you commonly use and you download stuff into it, maybe it's a folder that you use for your project with your you know, other teammates, or it's just your project folder that you need to constantly reference, you can connect it like that. And it's also super handy. And remember, if you need any more characters, we have a bunch of stuff on ace5studios.com. All these characters are animation ready. Rigs have materials are fully customizable and you can use them in your own commercial projects. We also have more stuff here, like some free rigs you can try out. We have character building kits. We have packs of simpler characters for infographics and infomercials and whatever it is you're making as kids. There's also some animals there, so go check it out. Won't be sorry.